Now I'm going to start with talking about compaction, okay? And uh, I'm normally talking about how we can reduce compaction, and we're talking about doing that out in the field. When we're talking about silage, what do we want? Increase. Increase compaction, okay? So if you're going to do it with a rubber tire, which is a very poor thing to do it with, okay? You want the pressure at the very top end of the range that the tire can be at, okay? As opposed to if you're trying to keep the compaction out of your soil, you want to be running to the bottom end of the compaction range. Now I have seen it, I don't know what you guys have here, I've seen people that have made their own compactors they maybe took something like a cultipactor and they put tires on it, probably used tires, and they filled them with concrete, right? So that the pressure inside is extremely, I mean, the pressure is kind of infinite on that little edge of the tire, okay? And when we're going to compact our silage, if you think about, I'll say, other things, we have... Uh, sheep's foot roller that we will use to, to roll a road base to turn it into a solid hard base. That's a steel, steel roller with little, I'll call them feet, they call them sheep's feet, but they're just basically uh, steel pieces. If you use something like that, you want to keep your lifts at about half the height of whatever your thing is. So your, your lifts, when we're putting your silage down to compact, it should be about a foot or less that will spread out and then try to get, get all the air out of here because to, to make good silage, we want it to be an anaerobic and go pretty fast to get it all the oxygen consumed so that we're not rotting our silage, we're insiling it in an anaerobic condition, okay? So I'm told I can only get three points across, so my first one's gonna be we want to compact it with as high a pressure as we can, okay? And then put it in lifts that are about half what your thing is. Generally speaking, we're gonna say a foot or less in each lift and try to get everything compacted. Now the first time over it, you get 80% you know, of what your ultimate compaction would be with that particular tire. The less uh, spongy your tire is, the better it's gonna compact. Concrete, a concrete roller is gonna be the the best thing where you can get the most pressure on the smallest number of square inches. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about a little bit, covering them. I mean, there, there were times when uh, corn was cheap. I can remember corn at a buck and a half. And maybe you could let some of it rot now that it's up there. Um, it's, you're going to put a film over it. Um, the films that we have out there, the 40, 40 mil films, are really pretty good films for protecting it so the oxygen doesn't get in and cause it to, uh, to rot. It's going to ensile. You can keep basically all of it really, really good. Um, with that, and I got, a, I got a call a week ago, and it was basically... Uh, it was a lumber company and they had built a machine shed and it had two doors. Somebody opened up the, the south door when it was a 40 mile an hour wind and they blew all the hooks off of their door that was on the, the west, west side. And he goes, well, how much pressure is that? Well, it, in Northwest Iowa, I could say most of the Midwest, we designed for 80 miles an hour wind speeds, okay? And 80 miles an hour, that's a lot of wind, okay? It's surprising when the derecho went through with 100 mile an hour winds that everything wasn't gone because it's a function of the square of the velocity. But 
that pressure turns out to be about 21 pounds per square foot, okay? And that's also the uplift force that you have to design for a building. Now, it's not exactly linear, it would go down from there, but a 40 mile an hour wind speed, which is, I'll say common, we probably would see that every two or three times a month, okay? Um, that's going to have an uplift force of about 10 pounds per square foot, okay? And so that's why you've got to cover it with enough weight over the whole thing. And especially the edges, I'll just say you want to always double the weight that you have at the edges because if you can ever get an edge to, to move up or I'll say you lose the fasteners on the end of a building, if, the, if it fails at the edge, it's gonna pull up enough that the next, next part needs twice or three times as much because of the increased area. And if that first edge failed, it's gonna tear off from one edge to the other all the way across. So that's why you need to have, I'll say absolute minimum is gonna be 10 pounds per square foot over that thing and triple double or triple the edges, okay? Pretty easy to do, but just think about how much that is. I mean, it's, if you calculated out how many tons of uplift are over that silage pile at 10 pounds per square foot. I mean, this door I was calculating, it was 6,000 pounds of force and they're trying to have a little hook you know, that's gonna pull it out and it's pulling out all of his uh, staples and fasteners. I mean, they're only good for 200 and you're trying to hold 6,000. You know. So those would be a couple things. Now, as far as the environmental side of things go, um, probably our dairy farmers have the, the biggest problem because we like to put up silage that seeps. Okay, and I was out there today, we looked at the silage, and it looks like there's a nice little clear juice coming out of that pile, okay? I've taken samples of that stuff and sent it into the lab to see what the BOD level is, so you'd get kind of a feel for it. And it, it, it's years, maybe a little bit like this, when everything is dry as can be, you put up silage and there gets to be a little bit of seep and then maybe you get a half inch of rain that can help push it. But I checked out what the BOD level is, biological oxygen demand from a silage seep. And it, it exceeds raw wastewater for a sewage plant by a hundred times, okay? And when you think about 100 times raw sewage water, I'll just say, if it gets into a, a creek where there are fish, they are dead. And they are dead like that. And it will keep on flowing and kill those fish deader than heck. The seepage off of a silage pile, like we have here, it cut, tends to come off very, very slow, so it's not that much. And what can we do about it? One, whenever you lay concrete outside, it should always have a slope on it, okay? So that you're only dealing with uh, runoff or the stuff coming off of one, one edge so you know where it's at and you can deal with it. You could put something as small, and I recently did this with a guy's silage pile where we put a, like a, a lick tank tub with a sump pump in it and then we were able to pump it. Now I, you just need to make sure that you prevent it from ever getting into a creek or a river. Because if it does, and I've been here I guess 33 years, we've had about three or four, I'll say major fish kills from silage piles. Then the DNR is going to come in and make you get a NPDES permit. You're going to have to have an engineered system that prevents it from ever happening again. 
And they, I'll just say, it's one of those things, it's not like it's a catastrophic event, like a six inch rain that you couldn't tell was gonna come. It's a slow creep, and if it gets into the, the river, it, would, uh, it will kill fish, and it will leave a path that goes right back to your farm. It's not hard to follow. Um, the last thing I had, and maybe this one's will be the one that you can remember. The other thing I hate about uh, silage is there's other things that like to eat them besides cows. And it either starts with a C or an R, depending on how sophisticated you are. <laughs> and uh, they also like to destroy the films you put on top. So um, I just say, now I, I was thinking about this. Now it's 42 years ago, I was a senior in high school and uh, the price of raccoon pelts was $75. When uh, raccoon prices are $75, there's lots of high school kids that'll go out and catch them all. I think a raccoon pelt today is worth nothing. Is it, can, do you know anybody that will buy a raccoon pelt for anything? No, okay, so they're worthless. So I would, they're always going around the edge and they, will, they love to eat the silage and I guess if they eat the silage, eh, it's okay. But they also will find nice places where they will scratch through, the, through your bag, they, their, or through your film, through your bag and start destroying your silage. So I like to get rid of them. Um, one of the things that they love is marshmallows and nothing else does, okay? I mean, you can use cat food. If you use cat food, you'll catch raccoons, you'll catch possums, and you'll catch cats, okay? If you use marshmallows, you will only catch raccoons but I would encourage you, just as a, a matter, especially early in the fall, they'll start to, to work on things and they'll keep working the holes bigger and bigger. If you can get rid of them early on, um, that's better. And if you know some way to get the price of the raccoon furs up to 75 bucks, then, then the high school kids will get rid of them all. But they're pretty, pretty thick at this point.